Walk through some of the bigger kidney stuff and a little bit of histology for you. So maybe about that stuff. Let's go through the kidney. Start big and small. So first off, we'll name the organ, which is the kidney, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to work from the outside and work our way in. So let's start with number 23, the outside, outside of the kidney. Capsule. Capsule. So let's name layer B. What would you call that outer edge? Cortex. Cortex. What would you call area A? Medulla. Medulla. So just like your lymph nodes and all those other things, you have it outside, an outer, and an inner. So capsule, cortex, medulla. Okay, then the problem is naming the stuff that's in those layers. So let's name these bright red things that always appear on exams, number seven. Pyramids. Pyramids, pyramids or renal pyramids, because they look like a triangle. All right? Then we're supposed to name the tips of the pyramid. So let's look at number six. What would you call a tip of a pyramid? A papilla. A papilla. Apex would be nice, but they do papilla. So my renal pyramids are in the medulla, but they contain a papilla. Then you want to think of Egypt, right? Egypt has pyramids and columns. So you look at the area between the pyramids, like number 22. What would you call that area between the pyramids? Columns. The renal columns. So I have pyramids and columns that go around the medulla. Make sense? Okay, let's now name this middle, 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 middle stuff. So what would you call number four? Pelvis. Pelvis or... We say sinus. Technically, sinus is the whole pelvis in the spot, but that's your renal sinus. You notice it has branches, 5A and 5B. So, which one is smaller, 5A or 5B? 5B. 5B. So, what would you call a smaller thing in your kidney? Minor. Small calyx. Minor calyx or minor calyx. What would you call 5A then? It's bigger. Major. Major. So, this is like a gutter system. Fluid's draining down and goes in the smaller tubes first, then the bigger tube second, then the really big pond next, and then down the huge tube number three. What's number three? Ureter. 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 That's the one's going to get to the bladder. Right? So you have your papilla, minors, majors, sinus or pelvis, ureter. That's basically the main structures in there. And then we have a problem because we also have the red and blue stuff you're supposed to name as well. This is actually not the best model to do that. The model that's in the windowsill, you should take a picture of, is actually the best model to do. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the model here. All right. So what you want to do in your college career before your next test mm -hmm. is learn the order of the blood through basically the kidney. If you go on the page, which I don't even know what page that is. There's no page number. They give you the order basically for you. But let's go through it. So number one, the red thing to my kidney. What is that going to be? Renal artery. Renal artery. Then the rule is every time it splits, you're going to give it a new name. So this thing here. Segmental. Segmental. Then it starts to split again. So let's do, for example, let's do this one. It goes up and it goes between the pyramids. So how would you say that? Interlobar. interlobar. They're lobes, so they're interlobar. Then if you notice, like at number five here, it comes up and then it curves or makes an arc. Arcuate. Arcuate. And then it goes up again. You can't see it on this model, but it goes one more time outwards. Cortical How much is that? Radius. Cortical radius. So if you think about what that means, cortical means cortex, radiate means to radiate out. So I went renal, segmental, interlobar, arcuate, and cortical radiant. That's how I got out there. Right? Are all three of those branches down there interlobar branches? Um, yeah, they're supposed to be. Okay. Then you're going to turn around and go backwards on the veins. You're going to repeat your language in reverse. So there would be a blue thing up here that goes down, which would be which one? Cortical radiant. Cortical radiant. Cortical radiant. Then a curve. Arcuate, and then you'd go down, interlobar, and then, no, there's no segmental, believe it or not. So you can't do that one, but you can do renal. Right. So you would learn one way going in and just reverse it with one difference going out. But basically, every time you split, you're going to give it a new name. Right? So thou shalt know the pathway of blood, thou shalt. Right? Let's go back to the other model, since it was there. This shows the same thing, just not, I think, as clearly. So let's start with number two. What's number two? Artery. Artery. So what would be this first, they don't label it, but what's that? 
Okay. Now we're going to go to here. So we're going to go there. And that. Very good. Then you do the blues, 17, this one, the same way that. So practice going in, turning around, and coming back. Make sense? So we have our pyramids, we have our columns, the pillow, we have our blood vessels, we have our tubing. That's pretty much most of the kidney stuff that, at this level of detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on a pyramid. So we're taking one of the triangles from Egypt, right here, I'm zooming in. Okay, remind me what 23 was. Very good, remind me what B was. Oh good, so what would all this be then? Oh, yeah, medulla, yeah. Okay, so here's the problem. So now you're going to notice the blood vessels. So remind me again what this blood vessel here would be, number 25. Interlobar. The interlobar. This one is the curve of the arcuate in cortical radius, right? So we're just zooming in. So what you want to do is look at number 9. That one's coming from the cortical radius and going into this funny thing. So it's going in to my nephron. How would you say in? Afferent arterial. So that would be the afferent arterial. Oh, wait, there's one coming out. How would you say out to? Efferent arterial. So when you zoom in, you can start seeing the ins and the outs. So there's the, here's the next thing you have to figure out is the white tubing. That's the nephron. So you notice there's different nephrons here. So what you're going to do with your finger on a test, you're allowed to do this, take your finger, start there. Or there. And take your finger and literally track it. Because what people will do by mistake, I'll just do, they'll say, oh, the thing on the right's descending. The problem is, this one's the mirror image of that one. On that one, it's the ascending, if you do the right one. Okay? So don't memorize it's the right and the left. Take your finger and track the fluid. Track the fluid. So, we're going to start here. I'm going to go through this squiggly tube that's near that. So how do you say <laughs> squiggly tube near something? Proximal convoluted tubule. Then I'm going to go down a tube. What tube am I going down? The descending, descending loop or descending loop of Henley. Then I'm going to turn and go up, which would be ascending, 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 loop. ascending loop. And then, hey, here's another squiggly tube over here. This will come. And then I'm going to collect with everybody else in the collecting duct. So PCT Descend, ascend, DCT, collecting duct. Right, just track the fluid, yes. Is the sending always the descending Kind of, yes. Okay. But you want to just do direction. You know, okay. no way I so on this one, it gives us a mirror. This is the descending on the left and ascending on the right. It's still the same relationship. So you're going to start with the proximal, go descend, ascend, distal, and out. Make sense? So literally, take your finger and you show that it's like your colon, right? If you follow the poop, you should get it right. That comes out wrong somehow. Right? Okay, so then what we're going to do is look at the blood vessels a little bit more. And that is, you have different blood vessels here. These blood vessels are surrounding the tubules. So how would you say around the tubule blood vessels? Peritubular capillary. Very good. But here are blood vessels down here which would be around the loop and the collecting duct. Those ones are your vas erectus. So you have peritubular capil capillary in the cortex and vas erecta in the medulla. They're basically the same kind of thing, just different location. Make sense? So now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in some more on the yellow, that thing right there. We're taking one of those circles and zooming in on the board is that. That is the beginning of one nephron. Look at the upper right corner, you'll see the name of that thing. That whole thing on the picture is called a what? Renal corpuscle. Corpuscle. So corpuscle is everything you see here. That is a corpuscle entirely. All right? But the corpuscle has things in it that thou shalt know. So let's go through our thing. So let's start with the easy one. Number six. That's blood coming in. Afferent. Afferent. So number seven must be blood going out, which is? Deferent. Deferent. Okay. Now we're going to name the tubing. So the fluid would start here and go this way. So on the other model, what was the first tube after the circle? Proximal. Proximal convoluted tubules down here. It would go down, come back around, and this would be the one near the outside. Which one's number 11 then? Distal. Distal. So you have your PCT, 
and DCT, your afferent, efferent. That leaves number eight and nine. So what is eight and nine together? Glomerulus. Glomerulus. So glomerulus is the blood vessels in there. But number nine has something on it that number eight does not. Podocytes. Podocytes, or foot cells. So you say podocytes, it sounds fancy. So these are podocytes that are on top of the capillaries on number eight. They would both be at both, both sides. So those are your glomerulus. So tell me what number 10 is then, Smarties. <coughs> the, the Bowman's capsule? Capsule, or Bowman's capsule. So here's where life's going to be problematic. There's a capsule on the kidney called the renal capsule, and there's a capsule here called the Bowman's capsule, or nephron capsule. So if you say capsule on a test next week, I'm going to scream at you in red because I don't know which capsule you mean. So make sure you either put renal or Bowman's or renal and glomerular, something that tells me you know there's a difference between the two capsules. Capsule just means outside, right? So renal is the kidney capsule. This is the Bowman's or nephronic capsule or glomerular capsule. So if you think of this as looking like lungs to some drunk Roman, you had a chest cavity, right? What do you call the outside layer of your chest cavity? Parietal. The parietal. So number 10 is the parietal layer. So therefore, number 9 must be which layer? Visceral. The visceral layer. And then what do you call the space or between the layers? Capsule. The lumen. lumen. Capsular lumen. So if they view a chest, parietal, visceral, and lumen. But in this case, the Bowman's capsule is the parietal. The podocytes are the visceral. But they still make those layers. Make sense? And all of that's a corpuscle. Is there visceral on eight? Well, in theory, that would be the visceral, but there'd be a podocyte there normally. Okay. So now the problem is number 13. This is the one that's going to bother you. Because 13, you notice, has two parts, a 12A and a 12B. All right, so here we go. If you include 12A and 12B together, that's the juxtaglomerular apparatus that we talked about in class. So 12A plus 12B is the apparatus, juxtaglomerular apparatus, <coughs> near your glomerulus, right there. But wait, there's more, because 12A and 12B individually have different names. So 12A is called your macula densa. Those cells, right here in the yellow, those are the macula densa cells. They're not the juxtaglomerular apparatus. They're the cells. 12B are juxtaglomerular cells, not apparatus. And that's where it's pointing here. So you have macula densa here, juxtaglomerular cells here. Put them together, they're juxtaglomerular apparatus. Make sense? So on a quiz or test, be careful for asking just 12A, just 12B, or both together. Because right? there's a different name. So apparatus is both macula densa and juxtaglomerular cells are individually. Remember lecture, this is for the blood pressure and the salt monitoring. Right? So be careful. Classic question is forget which ones are cells and which ones are apparatus. Apparatus is the bigger one. Everything. Make sense? Yes. Okay, then just to confuse you, there's another juxta word. It has nothing to do with this. But we love to ask it on exam just to watch you cringe and hate us. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the nephron on the right. <clears throat> Compare it to the one on the left. Which one's longer? The right. The right. And it's long enough that it goes near my medulla. So how would you say longer nephron that goes near my medulla? <laughs> juxtamedullary, meaning near my medulla. So you have a juxtamedullary nephron is the longer. <laughs> the juxtaglomerular is the little cells in the corpuscle. So don't let the J word throw you, they're different J's. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. That's pretty much most of the kidney. And we'll do histology a little bit. Let me get you some bladder pictures. I know you love that stuff. Ooh, here we go. All right, so we did kidney. Tell me tube number two. What was the tube two? Ureters. 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 What's three? Bladder. Bladder. Bladder, okay. And there should be a tube coming out of number three. Let's zoom in on that. What's tube four? Three thrust. So now we have some language to learn. One of my favorite words, second to rugae, is what number 15 is. Do we know what 15 is? Rugae? Nope. 
Trigon? Trigon or trigony. The way this works is you have one hole from your ureter here, one hole from the ureter there, and a hole for your urethra there, which makes three or a triangle. So trigon or trigony. That's the base of your bladder where the three tubes come out. Two uretic orifices and urethral orifice <coughs> makes three. I always put that on the exam. Okay. That's your trigony or trigone, you can say either way. That's in the bladder. All right? So I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the bladder you're supposed to know. Uretic orifices we got, trigony we got. Bladder, you good? Good, good, good. I think you figure that out. Okay, let's go through your urethra. We're supposed to figure out the differences in the urethra. So let's find, let's find naked men. Do we have a response to that? Okay, awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do this guy. All right, so in a male, we break down the urethra into other parts because there's more parts to name. So here's my bladder. So if you look here, this is my urethra, or some guy's urethra. All right, so you're going to name this part here. So what do you call the part right in there? Prostatic. Prostatic, because it's in my prostate. The little bit right here has a name. Membranous. Membranous. And then everything from here out is? Penile. Penile or spongy. Either way is fine. But then we have some other things to name. Which is this one, number 11. There's a red line right across there. Internal What is it? Internal urethral no, it's, well, it, it is, but it's not. That's called your urogenital diaphragm. In English, this is the muscle that holds your genitals on or in. So it goes from your pubic bone back, and that's like a diaphragm with your lungs. That's your urogenital diaphragm, the red line. Right? And that separates kind of your bladder from the exterior stuff. All right? On a girl, we would also find that part, but because you have less kind of hanging out, it's a little bit different. Really On a girl, number 16, what is that called? Urethra. It's just called urethra. You don't have to name the parts because there's only one tube. And the urogenital diaphragm is this red line here. So it's a slightly different location. Mm -hmm. But So women have one urethra, men basically have three parts to one urethra. But other than that, it's pretty easy once you get the bladder. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's do some histology. The easiest slides you'll see. Uh, let's go find J Doc. Where's my J Doc? Okay, let's do urinary. And we want to do. Alright, so you're on a lab exam. Your first goal will be name the organ. Okay, so hopefully, you're not going to say stomach. You're going to be mad. But you're going to say, that's a kidney, Mr. Christie. I'm going to say, well, how did you know that? And that's my question. How did you know that was a kidney? Mm -hmm. What are we looking for? What is it? Glomerulus. Glomeruli are the corpuscles. So each of these circular areas is a corpuscle, those round things, with the glomerulus in the center and the Bowman's capsule around them. So if you see that fist in hand kind of thing, we call it, those are corpuscles that have to be a kidney. So you're looking for those balls. So we're going to zoom in on the balls right here. That's one glomerulus, one corpuscle. So the corpuscle is everything you see on the slide. If I point to this, you say glomerulus. Point to this, you say capsule, Bowman's capsule. That's the lumen or the sinus, right? Parietal, visceral. Right. That's the one. So if, that's, if you can do that in your head on the slide, that's cool. So kidney, glomerulus, corpuscle, all that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, smarties. Let me get you with this one. I love this slide. I don't know where they got it. It's fantastic. Because what's all this stuff? Anyone know? Red blood cell. That's showing the blood going into the glomerulus to be filtered or coming out. So that just shows you, again, there's blood vessels in there. But again, I can see the corpuscle. The only other thing you can see easily on the slides are these kind of things. What do you think those things are? Is that? Nope, looks like that. That's not. Looks like some kind of mucus or watery kind of slimy stuff. Nope. Is it a cross-section of the tubules? It's a cross-section of tubules. Those are the tubes that are carrying the urine up and down. That's not the glomerulus, the corpuscle, that's the tubing. 
So if I go back to, say, this slide here, that's a kidney, and I'm looking at all those little nephron tubes in cross-section. So the urine's going in and out of the screen, basically. Right? That's, in the cor that's in the medulla. If I go to the cortex, where all the nephrons hang out, or so, like that, I can see the glomeruli and the corpuscles, but I also see the tubes. Those are all the tubes. So you have to identify two jewels when you see them. What's that dark spot up on the top right? The really dark, dark circular. It's me. I see. I don't know. Okay. It's just a weird spot. It's kind of a weird spot. I don't know. Okay. Pants. So you have the corpuscle, <laughs> kidney, tubules. And then the other thing you're supposed to know, even though it, it, we don't have slides of it, you're supposed to be able to identify the tissues in the rest of the urinary system. So this is a slide from 231, which hopefully you know better than 112. And what would you call these cells here? I heard it. Transitional epithelium. So what parts of your body have transitional epithelium? Bladder. Bladder, ureter, yes, where it gets stretched. So that could, that's actually a ureter because it's star shaped. But. So you have to identify transitional when you see it in a ureter or a bladder. But we don't have slides of a bladder or ureter. We still have to be able to figure out that that's transitional. All right? Let's see. So transitional is on the right, so that's where the P is. Right? This is kind of a bladder they're cutting through. Right? So if you know transitional when you see it, if you know, I could have another close up of a bladder wall. Right? So if you can do transitional, tell me where it's found. You can find the corpuscles and name what you see. So it's a kidney and tubule. That's pretty much the histology of the kidney, the urinary system. The rest of it is pretty much on the models. Okay. Make sense? That's pretty much kind of all for your anatomy. The next week you take your exam, and the week after that you pee in a cup. And we're off and running. Yes. <laughs> All right. Remember, the game is everything. You are. Put the lights on. Is it good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So we're going to start big and get small. So I'm just going to do big ones. So kidney, right. ureter, bladder, urethra. So if we go to our kidney, so I know that the outside is the capsule, which is the brown part. The, the cortex is the outer, lighter edge, layer, region. And the medulla is basically in the middle where the pyramids and everything live. And in the very, very middle would be the sinus or pelvis, which is where the urine collects. So if I take this and make it bigger for your photographic pleasure. Oh, yeah. All right, so again, I have my capsule, renal capsule, cortex, medulla. In my medulla, I have the renal pyramids, which is the triangles. And they have a papilla, which is the tip, basically. Between the pyramids are the columns. So column, pyramid, column, pyramid, column, pyramid, column, pyramid. And then, as I go downwards, in my sinus or pelvis area, I have the minor calyx, or calyces, which are the little forks that would collect the fluid here and here. They become bigger, which would be majors, right about here. And the majors, like in baseball, you know, all meet together. So your minors to majors to the pelvis or sinus, out the ureter. Then I'm going to do my blood flow. So if I start on number two here, which is the renal artery, if I go in, the segmental is the first one that comes off. And then I'm going to turn and go up between the pyramids or in the columns. That's called interlobar, because these are considered the lobes. I'm going to turn and become arcuate. And I'm going to go out further, which is the cortical radiant, also called the interlobular is another word for them. And then I'm going to turn around when I do my stuff and do veins. So cortical radiant vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, but there's no segmental. I just go directly into my renal vein. On this model, I would do the same thing. Renal, segmental, interlobar, arcuate, cortical radiant artery, cortical radiant vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, renal vein. All right. Then, if I take one of these and put it here, so this would be my pyramid with capsule, cortex, and medulla. Again, I have my interlobar, arcuate, cortical radiant. Then I would have an afferent, which is the one going from the cortical radiant into my corpuscles, which are these circles. Then my efferent are the ones coming out of my corpuscles, going away. So here I'd have my cortical radiant artery, 
my afferent arterial, efferent arterial, my peritubular capillaries, then to my cortical radiant vein and out. The veins down here are called the vasorectus. Those would go over these ones. And then I have the white things, which are the corpuscles. I'm going to follow the, the fluid. I'm going to start at my glomerulus. Then I got my PCT or proximal convoluted tubule. Then descend, loop of Henle, ascend, loop of Henle, or nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule. <coughs> then I'm going to collect in the collecting duct out the papilla. This one would be the same over here. And then that becomes this. So one corpuscle is this. So my corpuscle, I'm going to have the glomerulus, which is this part, and the Bowman's capsule, which is the outer part. So I put that in there. I have my afferent, which has the muscles on it, coming in through the juxtaglomerular cells here into my glomerulus, which is covered with podocytes, which is the visceral layer. Then I have my lumen, and then I have my parietal layer of my Bowman's capsule. The fluid would then go down the PCT, which would be this, go all the way around, and then come back out my DCT, which is here, which has the macula densa cells, and then head out. So afferent, efferent, juxtaglomerular cells, macula densa cells, apparatus is both, podocytes on the visceral layer, Bowman's capsule on the parietal layer, with a lumen in between. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Those podocytes are on the... the that as well as on the right. They would be. They just removed the right, capillaries and right. the fenestra. So it's okay. going out and back in before it goes into yes. the collecting? It goes by it. So it leaves the blood here. And then remember that the, the kidney has to check not only the pressure of the blood going in, but the saltiness of the blood of the urine coming out. So this is where in lecture, this is my GFR controller for the pressure. Mm -hmm. This is my GFR controller for the saltiness. So it has to check the fluid before it hits the urine, before it actually leaves the nephron. So between these, your kidney can control the GFR by where, knowing what's coming in and what's going out. So where does the filtration... Filtration would be from here, <clears throat> blood to nephron. Okay, and then the reabsorption? Those would be in the tubes down in here, which okay. I haven't gone over in lecture yet. Okay. And then the secretion, it obviously, also be is in right those there. Tubes. Yeah. So is there a mechanism when the osmolarity is tested here for mm -hmm. it to, instead of cycling back out into the collecting tube, for it to go back through another cycle? Nope. Is that something that would happen, or is nope. it just sampling? And it's just sampling and then like... adjusting the next round. Okay. So you're constantly leaving that stuff leaving, and what you're doing is the stuff that's leaving, you're trying to adjust what's coming in. Okay. So there's a delay. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd basically be sending your own urine back yeah, through, which would, wouldn't be doing you very much good. And then, if we head on out, and we'll finish up our... Picture, oh, one more thing on this one I forgot. And that is, this is called a cortical nephron because it's mostly in the cortex. This big long one is juxtamedullary nephron because it's longer down in the medulla, not to be confused with juxtaglomerular, which is over here. Then we're going to go down to our bladder. So if I leave there, go down my bladder, through my ureters, through the uretic orifices, into my trigon or trigony, which is the triangle. Then I go down my urethra orifice in my urethra. The bladder would have the detrusor muscle, which is the main one you see. If I'm a male, which I am, I have my prostatic urethra, membranous urethra at the corner, and my penile or spongy urethra. The urogenital the diaphragm is right there. In a female, there's just one tube, so it's urethra. And this one doesn't really show very good urogenital the diaphragm, which is right about there. And then worthless trivia. The internal urinary sphincter is always at the neck of the bladder, here. The external is your urogenital diaphragm. So males, your external would be there. Females, your external would be roughly there. And that's involuntary and voluntary. I'm sorry. Yeah, involuntary and voluntary. Yeah. Is that, just out of curiosity, is that membrane you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Is that the membrane where they can put the mesh in to when it, like, fails when sometimes when women get older or they've had a lot oh, of the babies? the prolapsy things? Yeah. I imagine so. Is that the membrane? That's your that PC muscles or your Kegel muscles or that. Okay. Because they can put a, like a mesh in and to hold everything That'd be a neat project to do. Stuff. I don't know. They have a mesh. Yeah. yeah well, a lot of lawsuits get based on those. But <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm not an attorney. I don't want to do See, in livestock, you just shove everything back in and stitch yeah. it closed. I mean, that's yeah. how you do it in the farm. But. <laughs> I think that's mesh, the idea about the mesh. It just holds it. I'm not sure that's going to Just physically yeah. plug it. Cork it. Yep. But you first push it and then back in. That's the goal. We have to take it out. One of the two. You can't just leave it hanging there. Yeah. I think that's that it? We got everything. Uh, let's see. I can do my boy here. 
So ureter, this one just basically goes through again the, the bladder end of town. So ureter's coming in there, uretic orifice. This would be part of the trigony or trigone. Urethra orifice through the prostate. You can't really see the curved spongy urethra. So just it's another way of looking at that picture. Nothing necessarily different. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I'm trying to think of this stuff. Nope, I think that's all. Okay. Everything else